It's a good word, I believe. Mark 14, and I'm looking at verse 3 through 9. I'll pick it out of the New King James Version of the text. And being at Bethany at the house of Simon the leopard, as he sat at, sat, I'm sorry, at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flag and very costly oil and sprinkled. Then she broke the flag and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves, said, Why is why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. Whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Assuredly, I say to you, whenever the gospel is being preached in the whole world, what, she, what this woman has done shall also be told as a memorial to her. And all the people said, amen. If the text is there in verse 9, she's done what she could. Look at somebody said and tell them, I'm doing all I can. Now, if that's not true, don't say it. But if it's true, <laughs> then you can say, I'm doing all I can or what I can. It's often in life that we see a divine moment that takes place and God sets it up for an opportunity to do something else more for Jesus and for others. Opportunity will come, but some will dislike the fact that it was served before you. Disappointed that you have the chance to do something in this moment. But the opportunity here crosses this woman's path and she did not let it pass. She was ready to pour. I believe everyone has a moment to come into a room or a place to do something greater. Your gifts, your talents, your, 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 your giftings gives you an opportunity to be used, but then you are discouraged, disappointed by others, and you don't move. I am not, again, guessing a word of knowledge or prophesying I'm just speaking truth. There are so many gifts in this room. So many amazing, talented people. But you have to decide within yourself, nobody can pour what I can pour. And I'm not going to let anything or anyone hold me back any longer to be used in this moment. I may not get another opportunity to use my gift. So let me pour it out in this moment. What's in your bottle? What's in your life? What's in your heart? What do you really have that you can pour out? What is your passion? What is it that you like to serve or give in the kingdom and in the ministry? You can tell how gifted you are by how hated you are. And how discouragement comes to tell you they ain't going to use you. You can't do this. Dis tell discouragement, take the rest of the year off. Because I got to do something with what God has given me before someone else steps up with their talent. And I'm sitting there saying, why not me? This woman, this woman, a year's salary she has here. She had been around Jesus earlier, but now she come to a moment where she can worship him. This is not a wasteful moment. This is a worshiping moment. And this worshiping moment is going to cost me something. Worship is not cheap. It costs to worship. When you yada the Lord, tehila the Lord, barak the Lord, hala the Lord, when you told the Lord, 
when you zamar, zamar the Lord, or shabak the Lord. Every step of these praises, the enemy is trying to shut your mouth. Your holler, your praise, your dancing in spirit makes the enemy nervous. This is not a place for me to hype you up now. It's just, you know, because you did it at home. You're in the kitchen. You got a bad call. You got some bad news. You just went into your praise fit. Like, devil, I, you had nothing to say, but you just went into a praise fit. You began to exalt the Lord. Toda the Lord. Extending your hands with the adoration of worship to him. God sets it up so that it's either going to be worship or worry. You have to decide. If I got to do something, let me worship. Because worship is powerful. It's something that God's inner ends to. He loves it when you brag on him. Talk about, I know it's a problem, but it's going to be over soon. I know I'm going through, but I'm coming out with victory. When you worship God, you can't do it out of spirit. You have to do it in spirit. Because they that worship the Lord, worship him in spirit and in truth. The devil ain't going to mess with you as long as you're up in spirit. It's when you get out of spirit, then he enters in with the carnal. When you go spirit, you go hot for God. You go up in a flame. In Jesus name it is worship here that is not cheap Jesus said that she's done what she could and I come to push somebody this morning to say oh you can do a little more yes you can yes you can you waiting to get debt free to get praise opened honey sometimes got to keep you right there just a little bit shy of debt free to see if you're gonna really praise me openly because what you have does not regulate your worship and your praise. You said, I can do this if he doesn't do that. Because he's already done enough for me to holler seven times a day. Will I praise you for your wonderful works? If this car don't get paid off, I know my praise is going to another level. I should be on high blood pressure medicine, but I'm on praise break right now. I should be on Ritalin. I should be on something. But God has kept this body balanced by the Holy Ghost. Everybody in good health, just give God a good health wave. Just give, thank God for good health. Thank God for good health, for decent health. Yeah, yeah. I have to be a witness. So she did, and she's done what she could. The text says in verse 1 of this 14th chapter, here the chief priests and the scribes are seeking craftily how they might catch Jesus in a scheme and plan to put him to death. They got tired of Jesus running around doing all these wonderful miracles and things he had been doing. This woman is looking for a chance to see if she can pour out her precious ointment upon him. It's strange that everybody comes to church for different reasons. It's strange that people get around Jesus with different agendas. But your neighbor will tell you, I come to pour this morning. I, I come to pour. I, I come to tell him, thank you for what little of you have done has made me rich. Yeah, yeah. If you can, be bold and tell somebody, I've been saving this one up. I've been saving this one up. I've been holding this one back. Mama don't know about this one. In my room, those things were running around the room, and I'm scared. Mama in the other room sleeping. I'm scared, but morning came, and I found out every morning he wakes me up with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It was a long midnight ride, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm ready to pour. It's been seven days. I didn't think I would get back to Sunday. The devil's been acting crazy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But here I am Sunday morning in this quiet church and all of this going on. I just come to get my holler out before I leave. Is that all right? And I was like, can I pour? Can I pour? Can I pour? Can I pour? She has this ointment and she wants to give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. She was in Simon's house. Simon the leopard. Seemed like Simon would have been the one with the party jumping. But Simon just sitting there inviting Jesus as his guests being cool. 
But this woman is looking and saying, Simon, he healed you of leprosy. And I decree, and I don't decree, I just know that you're sitting next to an ex-leopard. And, and how somebody has healed me of my sins and took the sin burden off my back. So if anybody in this house is going to give God the glory, it's got to be me. Because if anybody know what I was under and the yoke that was around my neck, you would be telling me yourself, you ought to holler louder than that, Simon. As good as God has been to you, you had leprosy, an uncurable disease. But Jesus healed your body, gave you life and life more abundantly. Here, this woman, Mark calls her, this woman, Mark calls her, waiting for the opportunity to use her gift. The character here of this woman could be any one of us, this woman. But clearly Luke 10, 38 lets us see this is Mary. Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his words. Mary knew how to come into worship and sit before him. Now Mary has an opportunity here to pour back on him what he's poured into her. He got an opportunity now to speak back the words to him he's been speaking to her. And Mary has an opportunity here now to tell him how grateful she is because he's been grateful and merciful to her. I don't think God gives you all that word for you to come in and hold it in your mouth. It's time for you to open your mouth and decree out your mouth the words of deliverance through Jesus. Jesus said she's done what's a good work pouring this oil on me verse 6 of mark 14 mark 14 she poured this thing on me and she done a good work this work was the work of love you can see the liquid being poured on his head pouring out upon him was an expression of her affection freely pouring it out upon him as she breaks open the flag and begins to pour it out it's faith that works by love you say you got faith but your God has some love with it also so faith is one thing but faith is action you can't say you have faith and don't exercise your faith so your faith must pour out when you don't see it yet when you don't understand how it's going to turn out your faith must turn up you must bless God in the moment moment because you know you're going to have another opportunity. So faith begins to work by love. I don't understand it but my faith says I'm coming out of this. My faith said this too will pass. Here's the value of her service. It came from her heart. Her heart here now is the sacrifice of her love. This very precious ointment that she has was costly. The, the haters start calling it waste. What's this waste that you're doing here? Why do you want to waste this? Look at the waste here. The cost of the ointment is in, in this money here is about 300 pennies or $195. These pennies here is 65 cents a day. A penny a day, you work for it. Here now, this woman's waste was 300 days of labor. She's been storing it up for 300 days. I found no one I can pour it out on until I came into Simon's house and Jesus was sitting there. It was him that I wanted to give it to because he gave it to me. Everything I got, I want to give back to him. You know it like this. Let everything that has breath. So, so you don't wait for somebody to tell you, pour something out. If you get another breath in the next five seconds, you should go. You should pour something out while you're sitting there. Oh, come on here. Come on, church. So here I am for 300 days of uh, just holding back this labor. And I got a chance now to pour it out. She cast it up on him. It was the record here that was very clear. Her faith was working. God is asking this morning, is your faith working? And if it's working, it must work by love. It must work by the first commandment of God. You should love him with all your heart, your soul and your mind a direct results as she did this the indignation came I said Lord then you telling me that I'm really not praising or worshiping until my neighbor get indignant I'm really not 
doing too much until I bother somebody. I'm really not going too far until the dog start barking in the house and the neighbor knock on the door. I, I really not pouring out too much until I feel my friends and it don't take all that. You have no idea. I'm getting ready to turn it up to the next level. It's going to hurt your ears because I am not pouring it out enough if you're not getting indignant. I, you get indignant or get with me, but you're not going to back me down. Because I know who I am and whose I am. It's not a waste, baby. It's worship. It's not a waste. It's worship. Worship is the key point of a thought here. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It is not entered into the hearts of men. The things God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus approves her worship and said she's done a good thing. She's done all that she could. Every ounce of energy she had, she gave it. Every bit of strength she had, she gave it. Every bit of money she had, she gave it. Wasn't the best usher, but she ushered. Wasn't the best deacon, but she deaconed. Wasn't the best worshiper singer, but she sung. Wasn't the best preacher, but he preached. And he gave all he had. Wasn't the best come and go out parking cars, but he gave it his best. God's not asking for your best. He's asking you to give all you have. I'm not trying to wait for somebody perfect to do this this job, I'm going to do all I can. If you're going to talk about it, then talk about it while I'm doing it. Because you ain't doing it but I will give God everything I got every strength I got every word I got if my mouth opens another moment it'll be a praise to God he don't take all that hollering up there you don't know what the hell, hell I came out of but thank God I still got a voice to give God praise we don't do it like them and do it like that cause can't nobody do it like me cause I got a self preservated praise I know who lives inside of me if you got the Holy it goes shout glory some of y'all couldn't shout it but we that got it know that we got it she's done a good work it's a good work because it's been justified she let it all out she let it all go she poured it out on Jesus he rewarded her he said surely as long as the gospel is preached this woman is going to be known throughout the world can you imagine your resume is about to go up God's going to let every Everybody know in every city, in every town, in every church that you are somebody that can't be quiet. You are somebody that will give God your best. I got a dollar and fifty cent, God. You take the dollar twenty-five. Cause I want to give my best. Cause you deserve it all. I don't have much, but I'm gonna break him off a little meal and a little water. Cause he deserves it. And your testimony will go throughout the world. What you talking about, preacher? You overcome by your testimony and the blood of the lamb. She did what she could and what she couldn't do, nobody else could beat her doing. Tell your neighbor, you cannot beat me doing my praise and giving God the glory. You cannot beat me telling God how wonderful he is. You can't beat me telling God how magnifying he is. You can't beat me talking about how great God is. Nobody can do it like you can do it. So open your mouth and give him the best that you don't hold out on me I'm just about to run out of here but I gotta give him all that I got yes yes Put on that neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you got more. I know you got more. I know you got more. Come on, come on. Come. Yes, sir. She did all she could. Shake that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, if you won't praise him, watch me praise him.
somebody, don't judge me. I'm doing the best that I can. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Somebody's about to pour it out. Pour out your hallelujah. Pour out your thanksgiving. Pour out your glory. Pour, 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 pour. She did what she could. She did. On the count of three, we're gonna shabak the Lord. Shabak is a, a sound, sustained, long. It could be hallelujah, it could be glory, but you sustain it long. It's a loud, sustaining sound. They shabak the Jericho and the walls came down. So I, everybody can stand. I need you to stand up. Don't, 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 don't. I, I'm gonna let you go home. I know I, I've been hollering at you. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm gonna need your voice now. I need you to say something. I need you to say something. So I know you don't like to get. You know, people might don't. People gonna get indignant and tell you that what's this waste? But this praise is about to break all that sickness, all that confusion, all that doubt, all that fear. This praise is about to release something out of your spirit. If you're standing next to somebody and, you, and you're nervous because you don't want them to think that you, you didn't lost it, then, then, then move over and get around somebody else. But I just want to talk to somebody is that this is going to be my millionaire praise break. This is when I know God's going to release something in the atmosphere for me to just get it. Everything I need is coming in this shout. Now, you may think it's just another exercise, but the Bible says when they came together as one and began to praise God, he said Judah showed up and Judah goes first. So we're going to Shabbat, we're just going to say hallelujah. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. Get it online. My God. I love it. Can we do it one more time? One, two, three, go. She did what she could. You want to make the devil real mad? Then just turn around one time. Say, there it is, devil, in your face. My story just changed to his glory. Give God a clap and a shout in his house.
Prophesy to three people tell them I see greatness on you. I see God doing great things for you. I see God bringing you up and out. I see the anointing on your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell that neighbor, neighbor, the devil should have took you out. He just made you matter. And you got to praise and you got to get it out. Someone say, here it comes, Jesus. I come back to pour some more.